Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about algorithmic efficiency and the runtime of algorithms. Now to compute the runtime of an algorithm or a piece of code, we have to first define our model. Now the model that is popularly used is called the random access machine model or RAM model. In this model, we assume that instructions are executed sequentially, that is one after the other, and no concurrent operations are allowed. Now RAM model is essentially designed on how computers work. And, the, and in the RAM model, we assume that commonly occurring instructions such as add, subtract, load, it contains them and they are the most basic operation. Okay, so these are the most basic operations. The next thing that we need to understand while determining algorithmic efficiency is the input size. Now, for depending on the problem, the input size will be different, but say if you assume that there are a bunch of numbers that you need to sort. So natural measure for the input size is the number of items or the number of numbers that you have. Now, having defined these assumptions of the model, we will then next calculate the runtime. Now on a particular input, runtime refers to the number of steps that the algorithm takes to execute. That is essentially what runtime is. Now, to understand runtime further, we're going to make some assumptions here. Now, for simplicity, we will assume that each line takes constant amount of time. So it takes some constant time. Okay. This is a fairly good assumption to make, that is each line when it executes takes some constant amount of time. Now one line might take more time than other. So we will just make that distinction here. Sorry about that. Can take more time than another. Than another. So every each and every line can take different amounts of time. Now, let ci be the amount of time taken by the ith line. Okay, so we are defining a constant ci as the amount of time taken by line i. And why is this needed? And we'll use this to actually figure out the runtime of algorithms, okay? So we have the RAM model, then we talked about the input size, and then we talked about how we are going to compute the runtime, okay? What assumption? That is, every line is going to take a constant amount of time, and the amount of taken time taken between lines can be different. So now let's consider an example, okay? So this is the first example, and we'll consider a few examples here. So I'm going to number these lines here. So this algorithm is four lines of this piece of code. So J equals zero. That's the first line. Then for I equals one to N, J equals I plus J. Then we will print J. This is the entire algorithm or the entire code. Now we have to figure out how much time does it take to, to execute this algorithm. To do that, what we are going to do is, we are first going to define cost. It's the amount of, of time that it takes to execute that algorithm or this line once and the number of times a particular line is executed. Now the first line takes cost C1. So line CI or line I takes cost CI. So for line 1 takes cost C1. That's a cost to execute this algorithm. By cost, I mean the time needed to execute this line once. So C1. Number of times line 1 will be executed is 1. Now line 2 will take C2 amount of time. Now the number of times this line will be executed is n plus 1. It will seem as if that, that the number of times this line 2 is executed is n, but it's actually n plus 1. So the for loop, the way it 
works is it'll it will go all the way from one to n and then it will come back again so i will be constantly incremented from one all the way to the n and then finally i will be incre incremented to n plus one at that time the algorithm will come to line two and check it and realize that i is now n plus one and It'll, it will not enter the for loop. That is why it will be executed n plus 1 times. Now line 3 is going to be executed n times for because i is going from 1 to n. So uh, g, this line 3 where j equals i plus j will be executed n times. Similarly, the print j statement will also be executed n times. Okay. So if you want to find the runtime of this algorithm, which we denote by tn where n is the input size so here n is the input size okay so tn will essentially be c1 plus c2n plus 1 plus c3n plus c4n now this will be essentially c2 plus c3 plus c4 times n plus c1 plus c2 okay so we can see that tn is linearly related to n so as n increases tn will increase linearly now because this is an introductory video we are going to assume that every line has a different cost and we will take this basic or fundamental approach to calculate the runtime. In a subsequent video, we'll talk about big O, big theta, and omega notations. And then you will see how we can actually calculate the runtime much more simply. Because you will see that the constants will not matter. And it's actually the input size that will dictate the runtime. But because this is an introductory video, we'll go about trying to find the runtime in this manner. Okay. So now let's look at another example. So this is the second example. So here we will have two for loops. So for i equals 1 to n. And the second line will be for j equals 1 to n. Third line is essentially k equals i times j. Now the, we'll once again follow the same approach cost and the number of times it's executed so line one the cost is c1 for line two the cost is c2 and for line three the cost is c3 now once again line one will be executed n plus one times because it's a for loop it will check that i is n plus one and then exit that for loop so this is going to be executed n plus one times line two will also be executed n plus one times for each i so for every value of i it will be executed n plus one times it might just appear that it will be executed n plus one times but that's not true it's going to execute it's going to execute n plus one times for each value of i okay and c3 will execute once for each i and j so for every value of i and j it will execute once okay so if you try to find the runtime tn line one will execute n plus one times c1 now how about line two so it will execute n plus one times for each i the number of i's that are there are n okay so it's going to execute c2 times n plus one times n plus c3 and line 3 is going to execute once for every i and j the number of i's that are there are n and the number of j's that are there are also n so it's going to execute n times n which is n square okay so we'll have c1 n plus c1 plus c2 n square plus c2 n plus c3 n square so we will k 
gather all these n square terms so and n terms and constants so then we will have c2 plus c3 n square plus c1 plus c2 n plus c1 now why are we gathering these because as i told you it's n square the input size which will dictate the runtime now c1 c2 c3 c4 they are all constants right therefore they will have a fixed value but n can increase and as n increases and tends to infinity it is basically this term which will have the most important effect okay so tn as n increases as n goes to infinity tn will grow or increase as n square because n square is way greater will become way greater than n which in turn will become way greater than the constants c okay so now before we conclude let's look at another example and that's where we will complete our initial discussion of algorithmic complexity so let's look at another example example three and this is going to be more interesting than the previous two so what we will assume is we'll assume that n is 3 to the power of k okay just assume that we'll see why that is going to be important so now for the first line is for i equal to 1 i less than equal to n i equals 3 times i and the second line is print i so if you wanted to find out the runtime we'll once again put the cost and the times cost will be c1 and c2 now we have to understand how many times the body of this loop actually executes okay so i is going to increase in this fashion i will first be 3 to the power 0 which is 1 or basically you can just think of i is 1 right then i will be 3 then i'll be 3 square because that's how i is increasing in this code 3 to the power of k okay that's how i is going to increase because n is 3 to the power of k so line 2 is going to execute k plus 1 times okay the, that is the number of times line 2 is going to execute k plus 1 times okay now k is going so if you try to write how many times this is going to what is going to happen here We'll have the times here as log 3 plus 2, log, log n to base 3 plus 1. So log line 2 is going to execute k plus 1 times. So line 1 will execute k plus 2 times. Okay, And k is nothing but n to the base of 3 log of that. So log n to base 3. So this is how we are going to compute the runtime here. So if you try to do tn, tn will be c1 times log n to base 3 plus 2 plus c2 log n to base 3 plus 1. And if you take the log terms together, we'll have c1 plus c2 log n to base 3 plus 2c1 plus c2 so this in this particular uh, problem tn is going to increase as the log of n so as n tends to infinity or a very very large number tn will increase as log of n so in this video we studied how to compute the runtime of code or any kind of algorithm and we studied the ram model and how we can compute the runtime in a step-by-step -step manner I hope you find this video useful. 
Thank you for watching.